Hello, everybody. Good morning. So hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, uh, my name is Ophir Gutelson. I'm with Unacceptable. Um, uh, for those of you who doesn't know Unacceptable, Unacceptable is a grassroots movement uh, for uh, saving Israeli democracy. Um, that's how we started. Uh, we do know that we have a lot of work to do uh, going forward to strengthening Israeli democracy. Um, and um, we, of course, uh, are very happy with the two uh, results, even three results uh, that the Supreme Court has given uh, this uh, week. Um, if you missed our conversation with uh, Professor Yaniv Roznai, you can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, but today we are talking on a different topic or not different topic. Uh, we are hosting uh, Dr. Tomer Persico. Um, uh, Tomer is a research fellow at the Shalom Hartman Institute, a Rubinstein fellow at Reichman University, and a senior research scholar at the UC Berkeley Center in, of the, for Middle Eastern Studies. Um, his field of expertise includes com contemporary spiritually Jewish modern identity, a Jewish renewal, and forms of secularization and religious in Israel. Um, and um, highly recommended to uh, check his uh, second book in God's Image, Self Food Freedom and Equality Hebrew in Hebrew that was published by Yediot. Tomer, is it also uh, translated to English already? It's translated, but it's not out, uh, and I'm uh, looking for a publisher. Okay. Um, great. So thank you, Tomer, for uh, being here. Um, and um, first of all, how are you doing? Where are you now? Um, 90 days into this uh, yeah. war. I'm in Jerusalem, in my home in Jerusalem. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sad. I'm pretty sad. I'm pretty heartbroken. Uh, the days are, are tough. Uh, you get up in the morning at 6 a.m. The IDF spokesperson releases the names of casualties uh, from yesterday, I mean, after the families have been informed, etc. And and every day also carries its own, you know, potential for a myriad of catastrophes. So, so you know, we're hanging on and we're trying to to help as much as possible. But but these are really difficult days. It is difficult days, and uh, it's a difficult. Uh, also, I mean, like I, I, I keep saying that uh, as much as it's difficult uh, in Israel that we cannot even imagine um, um, at the war uh, with all the casualties of uh, tons of innocents post the horrific uh, Hamas terrible uh, uh, massacre on October seven. We are also experiencing here something that I personally never experienced before. Uh, um, when I grew up in Israel, I mean, like the only war, the only time people refer to anti-Semitism is when we, when we lost in the Eurovision. Uh, um, yeah. And uh, that's kind of like was like uh, everyone hates us. Uh, but I think that we are experiencing here in especially in Israeli, but obviously all Jewish Americans and Jewish around the world are experiencing something new um, that was yeah. here probably all the time. But. Uh, the flames and the level of the flames of anti-Semitism has changed dramatically uh, since October 7th. And I wanted to mostly discuss with you about that um, and about the influence of what's happening in Israel um, about the level of the flames. Um, so I think that we, maybe we should start first with what what's what 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 do you think we are currently experiencing? Um, what is the type of this new anti-Semitism? If there is a definition for that, maybe it's the same one. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's get some some background for everyone on your thoughts about. Okay. That. I mean, I think we first of all have to acknowledge that first of all that there's a lot of legitimate criticism of Israel, and then even with the what we can consider the illegitimate criticism of Israel, it's not all from anti-Semitism. There's, I think there's a, a few strands of thought converging here and bringing to the fore what we can experience as extreme hatred of Israel. Um, it's it's post-nationalism, really people who don't understand even why nations, ethnic nation states need to exist. It's obviously post-colonialism, right? The critique of the West taking over parts of 
parts of the globe and subjugating, as it were, um, indigenous populations. And and connected to that, I would I would say that there is there is an um, an anti Western sentiment here. There is a hatred of the West as West. So so these are all things that are not connected to anti Semitism, but they converge together. I would think, and and they form a a this harshest of critiques of Israel, because at a certain point for certain people. And I'm talking about the left wing right now. There's anti-Semitism on the right, but this this is what what, what we are experiencing vis-a-vis uh, um, -vis this war. They converge and and in in a point in which Israel is taken to be the epitome and the uh, um, greatest manifestation of colonialism and Western hegemony on Earth right now, right? And Jews um, are considered ironically, white supremacists, whites, subjugating indigenous non-whites. And, and so the strands that I described before converge and, 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 and build up into this criticism, which not only singles out Israel, which it does, but sees Israel as the end all and be all of evil on earth right now. And I think that really is what anti-Semitism is. It's not hatred of Jews. It's seeing Jews as the epitome of evil, as the root of all malevolence, right? Um, if it's not, you know, they kill the son of God and then they, they make matzahs of children's blood or they're the harshest of capitalists exploiting the poor or they're Bolsheviks, communists trying to take over the world. Etc. It changes as the as the need arises, or it changes as the 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 villain of these certain people changes. But Jews are always depicted as this villainous, most uh, vile element in humanity. And right now, for these radical left wingers, colonialist white supremacists are the most evil in the world, and these are apparently for them, the Jews in Israel right now. And this, I think, here is where we where we cross over from, from criticism, whether legitimate or not, into anti-Semitism. And, and this criticism um, is coming uh, in time that uh, we are not necessarily in, in a, I mean, like it, we are, we are, it's coming in time where we have the most uh, right, extreme right, uh, 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 racist uh, government that we were going on the streets uh, since January. I don't know since January, even before the judicial reform started, yeah. because we we saw the the, the risk about it. Um, so I'm I'm kind of like thinking of like um, if if you look into this situation, um, do you think that you are seeing the 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 campuses? In a way, I, I, let's take a step back. What's happening in the campuses is very different, in a way, from what's the general sentiment of of um, mainstream America, right? Uh, if you look at the polls, um, again, people would say that it, maybe it's connected to the age of the of the of the people. Uh, we do also see it on on yeah, campuses. Yeah, well, universities have always been hotbeds of radicalism and new ideas and activism. So that's that's natural. So, so, and, and so, do you think that this is a this is a place where we should be worried about, in the sense of like these are the future leaders of the world, or of America, and or or that's something that again radicalism was there even when people uh, fought Vietnam, and then people have kids and they grow up and they have more, yeah. they care about gas, the gas prices and other stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how seriously we should take this phenomenon uh, when we're looking at the future. People do grow up, and and this is a, a minority in in many ways. I think what's more disturbing is is the legitimate criticism and the danger, of, not of radical left wingers to hate Israel, but of liberals. You know, just you know, run of the mill mainstream liberals to find what's happening in Israel abhorrent. I mean, I, I, if, if there's a danger, I think it comes from there.
Um, and when you look at the, so now, I mean, this was a general uh, discussion about anti-Semitism. Let's just deep dive a little bit about what's happening um, inside, uh, uh, in a way, the Jewish community um, in sense of, again, I mean, like, I think that the, the, the polls are showing that 70% of the Jewish Americans are voting to the Democrats, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's going to change in the next, next elections, but let's just take this as a number. Um, if we are looking into this uh, uh, people, I mean, and we see a lot of uh, uh, discussions about um, uh, the need for tikkun olam, and uh, there is, it seems like there is a gap between the, the older generation and the younger generation. Yeah. Um, and um, obviously, again, the younger generation have not seen, I mean, maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering what, what this younger generation don't see that the older generation don't see. Why there, I, think why there a few things. I think a few things. First of all, the older generation remembers Israel as a weak state, as a state that its very existence hinges on, you know, a few conditions and uh, which might not exist. And and it remembers, uh, you know, it more freshly or, or more, 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 more. Um, 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 more vividly remembers even the Holocaust and and whatever happened. And the younger generation is oblivious to all of that, or at least it's it's these are memories that that don't really speak to it. And the younger generation has been born and raised almost totally in a Netanyahu reign under Netanyahu reign, right? As far as Israel is concerned, I mean they don't. Perhaps they remember Olmert in a distant memory, and then there was Sharon. But really, they don't remember any left-wing government in Israel, basically ever. And add to all that, of course, the intellectual fashions now uh, with the younger generation, uh, which, which yes, is always more radical. But now, but we are experiencing a moment of, you know. Uh, it's called the pejoratively wokeness, but but it's it's a real phenomenon of of this sort of radicalization of of uh, I would say a turn from the more egalitarian, colorblind liberalism into identity politics and uh, identitarianism, really, uh, and with with added Marxist critiques, which 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 produce what we were discussing earlier. And I will um I will I will want to take the discussion to the point where um one of the things that uh, we have been talking about for many for the last 10 months is the implication of what's happening in Israel uh on what's how do we feel here in America and and, and obviously the rest of the world. Um yeah. We started with uh, again the, the idea that we are we are in a, in, a, in a place of uh, shared values, right? We are focusing on democracy, uh, um, and uh, many of the people here on the call, or and, and some have not, but I mean have, have joined the the fight for democracy. We are seeing the fight for democracy also locally here as well. Um, is is the fight for democracy and the fight for uh, um, of I mean. At, at that point of time, we saw people joining us. At the same time, a lot of us in, here joined other fights of local fights like uh, uh, social justice, uh, Me Too, uh, Women March, etc. How do you ex how do we explain the idea that those people are not joining, in a way, the fight now uh, for? I mean, and with the criticism, but they're also joining the the anti semitism part of it. I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll I'll hang on to something you said about the the this government, right? Mm -hmm. We know that this government was formed really according to the needs of one single person, of Netanyahu and his personal needs, his judicial needs, etc. Of course, it's a legitimate coalition; elections were held, etc. But it holds people and 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 parties that even two years ago, would have been unthinkable to be participating not only in parliament, but in government and holding high offices, right? We've got Bezalel Smotrich and Itamar Ben-Gvir, who have been um, 
boycotted, boycotted basically by every diplomat and high-ranking official in every country in the world. Nobody would meet them before the war, before the war, right? The, this is the level of their toxic, to, toxicity, right? Nobody wanted to meet them. And now we have them right now in the war saying things that amount, you know, really either to ethnic cleansing or even to genocide about the Palestinians. Not only them, by the way. So these very extreme, I would even say religious fundamentalists, are in high positions in government blurting out their wildest and craziest ideas about Gaza. And I can understand why it would be difficult for people who supported the democratic movement against this government, which tried to overhaul our judicial system and crush the separation of powers in Israel, and now have a problem in supporting this same government which during this war, and even if we think of we think this war is just, and even if it's we think it's handled justly or mostly justly, when these people talk the way they talk, I think it's very difficult for you know even supporters to to voice their support. There is a there is a question here that uh, popped up. Uh, and I can take it from Sandy Whale. I mean, like that that asking if the democracy movement in Israel made a mistake by not including speaking about the the violent settlers in the West Bank. I'll I'll, I'll give my point of view, um, and uh, then I'll, I would love to hear your your question, your answer about that. Uh, I mean, the reality is that the. The, the bottom line of uh, of this protest movement that was focusing on democracy was to save Israel democracy. And we have seen that after this 10 months of fight, um, uh, we have won the courts, um, which is, that was the goal for this protest movement. Um, and on the same time, again, I mean, the, the, there was a lot of other issues, as we're saying in Israel. Um, and that, that, that means that the fight needs to continue, uh, your point. Uh, Oh, I mean, yeah, uh, um, in, e in each major demonstration in Israel, there was always the anti-occupation cluster of protesters, you know, trumpeting and holding uh, signs and doing their thing. And they were generally accepted, but they didn't color the whole demonstration, which was mostly to save Israeli democracy. And I think basically this was a a balance that was um, um, rightly held. I mean, I don't think the the protest should have been against the occupation or against the the, the violent settlers, because then it it I mean we would have missed the point, and we would have lost a lot of people. I mean, one of the major uh, movements, perhaps the major movements in these demonstrations, organizing, coming out, um, you know. Uh, really uh, um, um, showing amazing motivation and 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 spirit was brothers in arms, right? What we call Achim Laneshek, right? I mean, these people are centrist, mil ex-military veterans, right? Military veterans um, that are fearful for their own democracy, for their way of life, and see the government filled with religious fundamentalists, as I said, and, and they're, they're just, they're against that. Now, about the occupation, I, I would assume m most of them want to end it, but most of them think it's either not the most pressing issue or it can't be done because the Palestinians won't cooperate or whatever. I mean, losing this force in the demonstrations would have weakened them considerably. So, so there was a balance. Again, there was this anti-occupation um, um, uh, cluster of uh, um, protesters in every major protest, but but yeah, we, it 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 wasn't a major issue. So let's go to the next uh, part of the discussion that I wanted to have, and that's about the role of uh, of Jewish diaspora, Jewish Americans, um, on the on the future definition of the Jewish and democratic state. Uh, we, we are seeing, um, again, over time, um, I, I mean, most of us here are supporting, even after the October 7th, and obviously before, supporting financially, supporting 
uh, going and volunteering in the country, uh, some of us. Uh, and that, that's something that probably, again, I wasn't here, but there's something that has been done before in other wars, right? After 73 and others. Mm -hmm. What do you think should be different in this in this era where we are seeing a, a split, not just about religious definition of Judaism, but the split on, on values between what's happening here and what's happening in Israel. Oh, the, the split of values is not, not nothing new, but I think we are really in a hinge point in our history, in our mutual history. It's, it's, it's in many ways, it's a defining point for, for Judaism in general. I think, after the war or you know a few months ahead israel will be under extreme pressure to progress in any way with the palestinians into some sort of agreement not get the agreement but progress towards an agreement and i think uh, this government certainly is not capable of answering that challenge um, you know even voicing even even lying about it right even saying yeah we want we want to end the occupation of course and let's do it right let's you know progress towards it they can't even say that and and without saying that i think there will be a breaking point between israel and and the west and the liberal west i mean and and that includes and that includes liberal jews in the west um now I, I I think and hope elections will be held at, held at sometimes uh, a more moderate government will um will take power but in order for that to happen you know we are in a struggle right now the struggle will continue it, it will get heated the moment Gantz and uh, his party uh, step out of the government and really um signal that a uh, new phase, uh, in the war has uh, been reached. Uh, the war is now, uh, you know, going into a, a sort of uh, it is receding in a way. In in but but I but I want to say even something even broader about Judaism itself. I think, um, I mean, we are really in a crisis point in which the people in Israel have been through a horrendous trauma. Uh, and it's still going on, right? And it will go on. And we have 100, what, 30 hostages in Gaza right now. Even if some will be back, I think many will be there for years, if not forever. Um, it, it's, it's going to be an ongoing trauma. Any movement towards a two-state solution or any kind of agreement with the Palestinians will be very hard for, for the Israelis. I am Already there is settler violence in the West Bank. It's going to continue. And I really fear that Judaism itself is going to be stained by the mark of the occupation and of with and, and of uh, uh, even a, a, a semi-formal apartheid, because if you don't say, yes, we're going to end it someday, we of course don't want to rule over these rightless uh, people, that's what you get. And I'm, I'm, I've, I've been concerned about this for, for years, but I think now, you know, we, we've come to the moment that it might materialize that, that Judaism itself will be stained in that way, the same way as Christianity has been stained by the Crusades, the same way as Islam has been stained by Islamic terrorism and ISIS, etc. Imagine that our tradition will now have this this wound to to carry around and to this this ugly scar on it, which is you know still festering. It's not going. It's it's even not a scar. It's it's really a wound. I, I, I so 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 politically there can be a break between Israel and the West, which will be a catastrophe for Israel for sure. Not you know I'm not this is this is no small matter. But but in even broader historical uh, significance, Judaism itself will be stained forever. 
And and I think it's it's really we're really nearing that point, and I'm really concerned about it. And uh, I mean that that's a great point. I mean I mean we are keep seeing uh, pictures coming from Israel. I mean like just just I think two days ago after the 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 assassination of Aruri, we saw people uh, uh, on the street of Jerusalem uh, giving away uh, candies, right? Which is like pictures that we see from our enemies. Um, and we also, I mean, uh, uh, appalled from that. Um, and that, that's just a comment, uh, I mean, I mean, to, to some of us, I mean, like it's as part of uh, 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 our, our really important job to make sure people are not forgetting what happened on October 7th, the massacre, the, the, the horribles. Uh, we are tending to share a lot of content uh, that sometimes mentioning that there is no innocent people in Gaza. Now, again, we are not doing it intentionally because we think that there are not uh, innocent people in Gaza, but it's it's just helping uh, the same way that we are we are pulled from what Ben Gvir and, and Smotrich are saying. We are we are doing something that then again, I'm I'm here in the Bay Area, what we call the ground zero of the city hall discussions. Right, and we are used, this has been used against us later on, right? Showing, and this is a stain that I think Tomer is talking about. I mean, the idea that again, I mean, what's happening in Israel is then being followed over here. We cannot really separate the two the two things. Yeah, I mean, I think um, that's what we've seen over the last few weeks, right? I mean, the anti-Semitism that has risen up in 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 the states and in Europe, I mean, is is connected directly to. What's happening in Israel, right? Obviously, uh, and 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 it's and it's directed towards Jews who may not even be Zionists or even care about Israel, but but that's that's just what's happening. And and again, what you said, I mean, again, I have to 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 go back to um, to the 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 inflammatory and and really horrendous uh, sayings of members of government here. Like we have been repeating or or playing and repeating that uh, clip where one of the Hamas leaders in Gaza says, yes, we're going to do another 7th of October and another 7th of October and another 7th of October. That's what we plan to do. And we'll be saying, look, these are these people. What do you want us to do? We have to defend ourselves. And rightly so. But the same way, again, anyone who hears members of this parliament and government speak the way they do you know you know there was this minister who said something about an atom bomb on gaza right so the same justification that allows us to to you know to 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 defend our views because they say what such horrendous things goes both ways and and you know that's that's part of the problem we're in right now so let's talk about what's what's uh, what we can do from here. I mean, in your point of view, I mean, there is a uh, um, there are again there are in a way three uh, places that we we are looking at. We're looking at the campuses. We're looking about influence, probably at advocacy locally at the at the city halls and nationally at the at, at uh, the administration. Um, and then there is what we call the grassroots effort that could be done. I mean, any. Any thoughts about what can, and, and obviously there is also funding and and the donations uh, to places. It, what, what are your thoughts about what can be done from here on two elements? One is the stain that you're describing that could could happen on Judaism in general, but also on the disconnection from between liberals around the world and liberals in Israel and Israel itself. No, I mean, much of that obviously depends on what's happening in Israel, and 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 you know I'm not. Obviously, a lot of activism is important in city halls and, as you said, and in demonstrations and in, on campuses. But I would wish that um, that American, significant American Jewish bodies would, you know, get off the fence and be able to criticize our government, to criticize this, even this specific government, which is the most, you know, by far the most extreme, the most religious fundamentalist government ever in Israel. I mean, you know, these are simple statistics even. You've got, um, you know, I'm not going to even get into it, but but 
and and to to and and what and, and in criticisms I don't mean you know this is bad it shouldn't be done but explaining that the way this leadership is taking Israel is causing tremendous damage both to the state and to our tradition in general I I am and you know it's not like Israeli ears are the most open to criticism from abroad they're not but but I think especially in this moment where we did and do feel some kind of connection to each other as Jews, as Jews that have been through a pogrom. Uh, I think, and 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 you know, not to mention the amazing amount of funds that American Jewry has been, um, you know, collecting and sending over. I think, you know, along along with these funds, uh, perhaps criticism would be would be better heard uh, this time. And and when we I think that uh, when I consider criticism, I mean like again, I mean like it's it's really it's really need to be uh, um, mentioned that again criticism against the government on, of Israel, right, and their uh, uh, actions, which is by the way could be against any type of government in Israel also in the future. It's like it could be when a centrist government is coming, they work for two state solution, but they are. I don't know, want to hold back on uh, uh, return, uh, law of return, as an example. I don't know. There is, I mean, the, the definition of criticism about the government, that's, I mean, and maybe you can you can explain more about that. I mean, some people say that criticism is equivalent to anti-Semitism, right? Criticism of Jewish people, right? Again, I mean, on, yeah. on the Israeli, it could be, could be confused by the same criticism that we see from uh, people in the city halls who are criticizing Israeli with bad facts, with uh, with horrible uh, accusation. So, how do you, I mean? How do you work walk between those two uh, areas? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we can't let that stop us. I mean, obviously, I mean, uh, by the way, we let's let's admit that obviously the the libel of anti-Semitism has been used. Uh, to deflect criticisms on Israel, right? It's for years. So, so obviously, you know, I, I'm, and 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 we shouldn't give in to that. Uh, concrete and and serious criticism should be heard. I think, and uh, you know, I and I don't, I don't see also what's the big deal uh, in the in the bottom line. I mean, you can criticize Israel, and whether we accept that criticism or not is something else i mean but but the uh, but it's democracy what it's called democracy yeah i know right. yeah and, um, and, and yeah, it's called sovereignty and it's okay i mean i'm a citizen of israel and i vote and and perhaps people here don't vote for, and it, it's okay i i decide who the government will be with others but but i can hear your voice i mean i can hear what you're saying what you think about it I think that's that's okay. Right? Yeah, and and I think it's super important to mention that I mean again I mean I mean many many of people joined the fight for democracy during these months months uh, over the next ten months and again some some are feeling like it's it's uh it's uh not the right time which is by the way I mean it's not different from what's happening in Israel I mean what is the right time to go and talk for uh, for demanding new leadership. Obviously, there is a debate about that in Israel as well. I mean, you are seeing some of the protests uh, starting again. And those are different protests than the protests that we saw in Kaplan uh, uh, before. They are led by um, uh, bereaved families. They are led by displaced uh, citizens in Israel that are not being treated by the government. So there is a lot of, a lot of uh, activity that is happening right now in Israel about what is the right time. Um, and uh, Tomer, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you're in Israel, and maybe you want to share about the feelings and the discussion about the right time in Israel. I mean, I think I think I mentioned before. I think the demonstrations will pick up tremendously the minute uh, Gantz's party will uh, will leave the government, because again, that will that will be the point where everybody will understand that whatever security wise was there to do in Gaza except keep on doing what we do has been done and and it's time to to really go for a new elections for new elections etc 
And then I would expect an explosion of demonstrations with frustrations and anger from all over. I mean, I, I assume there, were, there will be a lot of right-wingers which will protest because they would think that Israel has not punished Gaza enough or occupied Gaza enough or settled inside the Gaza Strip enough, etc. So there will be protests from every corner and and I, I really actually don't know what will happen because, uh, you know, there's going to be an explosion uh, in Israel at that time. Now, again, that, that and, and, and then we would have to wait, I guess, a few days or weeks to see what's what's coming out of that. But and I hope what will come out of that is the fall of the government and uh, a new election that will be proclaimed. And at that time, yes, I think I think we should hear voices uh, of uh, of our fellow Jews. Yeah, and um, I, I'm, we're getting on the chat a couple of questions about uh, about the, about the right time, and uh, I, I want to make sure that uh, uh, everyone is clear that there is no no one is criticizing uh, um, the Israeli government and blaming the Israeli government for the atrocities of Hamas. Uh, there is no question about that. There is a question about the, the, the policies that we handled over the time before the war and after the war. Um, and so there is no question about the legitimacy no, was, of, of was, eradicating Hamas. Yeah. Was was that any in any sense made by by something yeah. I, I said? So obviously there's no legitimation no. at all ever yeah. for what Hamas did. And obvious, and I think Hamas should be eradicated and really wiped uh, out of the face of the earth. I don't think that's possible, but I do hope that eliminating its leadership and its political and and military power in the Gaza Strip is possible and will be done. Um, and so, so yeah. no, I mean, there, no qualms about that. And 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 yeah. just to make clear. And uh, there is a question coming from uh, Karen Balk Balkin. I think I'm writing that. What can we do when we don't agree on Israel? It's doing terrible damage within families. So I think that uh, it's an interesting uh, comment. Within uh, what? Within families. Oh. So, ah. so I, I would say that, uh, again, I mean, even personally, I mean, uh, it, it's what, you're, what some fa Jewish families are experiencing now. It's very similar to what happened in Israel during the judicial overhaul. Uh, where you were sitting in in the in the in the in the Shabbat dinner, and you would argue on 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 the same on things that doesn't make sense to argue about because it's just values. I mean, your your thoughts about that? I mean, yeah, have, but, have you experienced that? Uh, but then again, there are some facts that you know need to be stated. Like first of all, we need to um, um, uh, we need to make clear whether ethnic nation states are legitimate or not, right? Whether States like Japan or Spain or Greece or right Hungary are legitimate because these are states of a third a certain ethnic group that has a right of self determination and sovereignty over a certain piece of land. Is that okay? Israel is like that. It's the nation state of a, the Jewish people, which are a certain ethnic group, right? Is that okay? Because many young people, I think, and especially Americans have a problem understanding that this is actually a reality recognized by the international community and totally legitimate, obviously. Uh, and so, so first, these are facts that we can, you know, suss out or uh, the fact or, or talk again, talking about colonialism, right? Is Israel a colonialist project, right? In which some superpower or empire has planted its own people abroad in some colony for the you know for making profit of its resources etc eh, not really etc right so again these are things we can talk about and and discuss and try to understand if there is truth or not in them and and then later of course there are arg arguments about values which which are something else yeah um um, I'm 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 just mentioning to the people on the chat. I mean, like I'm, I'm I'm trying to avoid political questions about Lapid and guns and others because I don't think that that would be our superpowers here, unless uh, uh, you think otherwise, Tomer. Right, um, let's, let's 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 address one. 
No yeah. Problem. So what, one of the question is that is is about uh, you mentioned that the that when Gantz leaves the government, and we need yeah. to maybe remind everyone, Gantz joined the government uh, to be. Uh, I, I would. Uh, my opinion is to make sure that the that the soldiers and the people and and the ward doesn't look about it as a as a, even craziest government doing the war. Yeah. Uh, so making it more responsible. Um, yeah, it's basically even Netanyahu wanted this you, to form a smaller a cabinet in which the major decisions about the war are are done instead of the official cabinet, which really doesn't have a a, a role now because and Netanyahu knows and, and and doesn't want it to have a role because all the crazies are there, right? And we don't want them to actually decide about the war. And and so when when Gantz is about if and when Gantz will leave the government, and and so I, I would I would take a step back just to people. I mean, so if if you haven't heard our my conversation with Professor Yaniv Roznai on Tuesday, we talked a lot about the definition of of the of the stability of the government. But just to give you the sense of what's supposed to happen, so the the Knesset has uh, a, 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 the Knesset uh, session is ending end of March. During this time, the Knesset can decide to dissolve itself and go to election. If that doesn't happen, we will have a, a, a break and then we'll come back in the summer uh, or in the spring uh, for another session. So there is a lot of push to, to dissolve this government until then, and obviously a lot of pushback uh, from, the, from Netanyahu and his people to kind of like uh, 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 procrastinate on everything the day after uh, some of some will say in, under the hope that uh, uh, Trump will be a candidate and then will bring more reasons to keep this uh, fully extreme right wing government in power uh, or for, for their own base. Uh, but the definition of the day after uh, or the end of the war, I mean, Tomer, in Israel, people think about the end of the war when? when Gantz will leave the, 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 the might leave the government when? When, Look, when I think the war is already winding down in a sense that Israel is not going to go in with major forces into other parts of the Gaza Strip. I mean, what we've done, we've done. Israel is looking now in Khan Yunis for bunkers or tunnels of the leaders of Hamas. Uh, obviously, any, yeah, we say in Israel, neutralizing any assassination of, 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 of leaders of Hamas will be very, you know, moral, in, in a, not, not morally in, a, in an ethical sense, but morally in, a, in the, 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 the spirit uh, will be very, uh, you know, beneficial and, and a sort of a way to say, okay, we've won this war and let's now reorganize in, in new um uh, in in new ways i mean israel is already talking about you know setting a certain perimeter around the border in the gaza strip and and having the freedom to go in and and deal with security threats uh with special forces which i think is necessary um the the real question is who will take care of the civic matters in gaza and again, here Netanyahu does not want to say anything because he's afraid his more right-wing and fundamentalist partners will uh, will um, will break up the government if he does. You know, they are dreaming about ethnic cleansing and the resettlement of the Gush Katif settlements in Gaza, or even more than that. Uh, that's obviously not only diabolical, but but simply unrealistic nobody will let israel do that and it's it's just it's really that's that's detached from reality and but netanyahu is in is stuck that way right he can't talk about what's going to happen the day after and and just to understand what a jam israel is in the i, I think i read somewhere that 70 something percent of buildings in northern gaza are basically unlivable in right are gone basically right the amount of money that will be needed to re you know to to rehabilitate all of the northern half of the gaza strip is unbelievably huge this money can be i guess 
asked for from the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia, etc. But they will condition their giving that money on the fact that Israel progresses into some sort of you know, process with the Palestinians to, towards some sort of agreement, right? I mean, they have no reason not to set that as a condition, even for practical reasons, because if Israel doesn't do that, obviously terrorism will raise its head again, and the money that they spend on in, on Gaza, invest in Gaza, will be wiped out in the next war Israel wages. So why would they do that, right? Now, can Israel accept such a condition? Again, I said before, Israel just has to say, yes, we think, you know, we don't want the occupation to be continuous forever. But even that is a problem for this current government, even to lie about it, right? Though, of course, I wish they wouldn't lie. I, I, I do want a process, and I, I, I think the two-state solution is basically the only feasible solution for, for our problems. So, so, so we're in a, in a real jam, and 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 Israel can't can't hold a security responsibility, or a, you know, talk about the freedom to enter Gaza and neutralize threats with special forces, while a million people in Gaza are starving or dying of plagues, right? It, it's just is Israel can't do that, and so so something will have to be done, and 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 again, this government just can't do it, and yeah, and, and that's that's and, uh, and there is and and that's again that's a, I mean from our perspective, I mean the criticism on the government is just that they are not feasible. To, I mean, and that's a criticism not of ours. It's like the criticism from the people. I mean, eighty percent of the people in every poll in Israel, right, are calling yeah. for for election. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's there's a, there's a, a, a an amazing anomaly in this war like as you probably know as americans uh, like when george like uh, j just after the 911 terrorist attacks uh, bush was president he was never too popular but after those attacks he like had 90% uh, approval ratings etc olmert our prime minister which was again never too popular but when he began the a second Lebanon war after soldiers were kidnapped by the Hezbollah, his popularity shot up. This time, Netanyahu's popularity just goes down. This is the leader of our country during war. And since the beginning of the war, he has lost approval, not gained, right? Because people blame him for this catastrophe. And actually, they just don't trust him. Yeah. Again, and 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 the, the 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 blame is coming from years of in power, right? Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, I, you know, it's yeah. it's so ridiculous. His uh, his uh, you know psychopaths. It's uh, his 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 journalists that are we call them the shofarot, right? The 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 journalists that trumpet whatever he needs at a certain moment or media people, etc. They are trying to blame anyone else for this except for Netanyahu. But Netanyahu was in power, I think, 14 out of the 17 years that Hamas has ruled Gaza, right? <laughs> or, or even it's 14 out of the 15 years that Hamas has ruled Gaza after the coup and after it uh, it chased out the Fatah, the Palestinian yeah. Authority. So, I mean, it's you were there the whole time. You could have prevented it if you'd acted differently. And and not only has Netanyahu not prevented it, but he has actually strengthened Hamas by handing over suitcases filled with dollars from uh, Qatar. So to wrap up, uh, we have eight, eight more minutes. I'll start to pick up some other question. And one of the biggest questions that people are keep asking is like, uh, is about, and I think we covered it, is about how, how you can be both in a way Zionist, right? There is no doubt that you believe that Israel should exist as a, as a Jewish and democratic Me. state. Of not course. you, not you, not, not you, that us. Ah, okay. being, yeah. How can we, as as people who are Zionist, can be both Zionist and we are able to criticize the government? I think we covered that uh, in many ways. But if you have anything to add on that, please do. Um, 
No, I mean, just to say that we are really in a point where we have never been before, in a crisis so deep that really it threatens, you know, the existence of Israel as a democratic state, perhaps even the existence of Israel. So, yeah. and, and, and this government is simply totally inept and unable to 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 rise to the occasion and 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 deal with it and and on top of that the last question that i will take is um is about about the the concept of uh um getting younger people uh to understand i mean so again so there is different i mean we talk about we as zionists believes in criticism on the same times there are kids i would say younger generation who are questioning the question of Israel to exist as an as a Jewish state. I mean, not the question of it's not about it's not about the elimination of the Jewish people from 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 the country. But what yeah, what yeah. do you what tools do we have in our toolkit? But to, but again, that's I, I talked about this before. Question I think, to answer. I, I, sorry. Or maybe it's not even a, a something we need to even deal with, or we don't have to actually. No, I think we do have like, to deal with it. And I talked about this before Earth, that the Eris is not flat, like. It's like how do we how do we how do we talk to to the younger generation about that? I think Americans in particular and younger Americans even more so have a problem with understanding the legitimacy of a a nation state that is not like America. It's not a constitutional republic. Okay? It might be a democracy. It certainly should be a democracy, but it's an ethnic nation state built around a certain people that have the right of self-determination and of sovereignty in their own land. That's the idea, okay? Now, it's a very old idea. It's nothing new, and it's totally recognized by the international community. But people, but Americans, have a hard time understanding the legitimacy of this. And always, when you have an ethnic nation state, you will have minorities, which are a different ethnicity in that nation state. And the, the test of that nation state in being a democracy and being a liberal democracy is how they treat those minorities, right? And this which we should we should be very cautious about and 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 you know see that the treatment is fair and equal and 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 serious and and you know and and liberal. But the idea that the nation state is is that an ethnic nation state is legitimate, you know, this I think should be a, perhaps a part of the educational curriculum of of young Jews in 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 the states because I guess they don't understand it. And, and that's that's a great way to uh, um, to to end this discussion because I think that this is uh, where our I mean we need to remember that the, the state of Israel was is, was created with the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence is really clear about minorities, about Jewish, about being democratic, um, and and our uh, role in many in many ways is to remind that to the world, remind the risk of this government. Right. That are that, that again. I mean, I just want to remind people that in the court discussion, uh, uh, the, the lawyer Bombach, I think, was mentioning. Well, the 37 people who signed this declaration yeah. of independence, probably they, they cannot commit for the rest of the nation. I mean, like it's like talking about the declaration of independence of the USA, right? So, so those are the people who are in power. They are still in power, even though democracy got got uh, uh, reapproved by the Supreme Court. That's still a risk, um, and uh, the risk is is also on us to remind and, and remind the the people in Israel and the government in Israel that we have a stake in this concept that called the Jewish homeland. Um, and last words, Tomer, and uh, we'll but, wrap up. Uh, you know, last words. Let me just say thank you to to you American Jews for all the support that you have been giving, and and really the the first of all the care and the the concern that I think is felt here, uh, and it's really reassuring and and heartwarming in this in these very very difficult times. So 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 simply thank you uh, for for having our back. Thank you, Tomer, and thank you, uh, Shimri, that uh, helped me in co-hosting. Um, and uh, the recording will be available both on the YouTube channel, and uh, we will send an email to those who registered um, to the to the to the call. Uh, we'll see you maybe next week when we figure out what's next. Uh, if you have any ideas, feel free to of speakers that you want to hear. Please uh, 
email me or anyone else on unacceptable. See you next time. Thank you, Tomer. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.